Hey Internet, it's your old friend Dominic here with the All-American Casino Guide. If you're new to the channel, we are dedicated to providing you with all the tips, tricks, tutorials, and trivia that you possibly want to know about casinos and casino games. So if that kind of stuff interests you, I recommend you subscribe to the channel. But today, very interestingly, we'll be talking about raises and re-raises and how to use them to build the pot. Before we get too wrapped up into strategy, I want to first define some of the terminology. Uh, what is a bet, what is a raise, and what is a re-raise? A bet is the initial offering. So when there is no money being pushed out uh, in a, a particular round of betting, you simply make a, de a declaration, $50 for example, that is a bet. Then if player two decides that $50 simply isn't enough, they want to increase the bet, then that is called a raise. So if they raise the bet from 50 to 100, that would then be called a raise on the existing bet. And then finally, there is the re-raise. So then betting goes back around to player one who has an option. They can either fold, meaning they don't wish to put in the extra $50, or they can call meaning put in the remaining $50 that's missing from their initial bet, or then the final option, re-raise, which then they are going to say, not only is your $100 not enough, but I want to put even more in, so they can increase the bet by, say, $50 or $100 more, or any number, depending on the betting limits of that particular game. Now that you understand the basic terminology, let's get into why uh, raises and re-raising is so important. Um, it is, at its core, a fundamental skill of every poker player. And the reason for that is because it's the only thing that's going to allow us to increase the size of the pot and overall hope for a potentially large payout. Without it, you're going to see uh, diminished numbers in your winnings. So the most basic thing that needs to be understood is that you want to raise the size of the pot whenever you're holding a strong hand or presumably the hand that it will win overall. In situations where you're holding a weaker hand, where uh, victory is not guaranteed, you want to try to minimize the pot as much as possible in order to control your potential losses. Um, after, after all though, this is gambling, so you need to understand an element of risk is always associated with any particular uh, gaming act. The other last thing I want to talk about in regards to why betting is important, or how we understand betting, raising, and re-raising, is that uh, the amount that you'll be able to bet, raise, or re-raise is really fixed on the kind of structure that you're playing in any particular hand of poker. So there are three structural types of poker that you'll come across, and that is fixed limit, pot limit, and no limit. So I'll just try to break those down for a second. Uh, fixed limit, is where a table has a fixed particular maximum bet uh, or raise that has been prearranged before the actual round starts. Uh, typically, something around the, the limits of the big blind or maybe like something arbitrary like $50. Um, with pot limit, that means that the maximum bet or raise, uh, rather, that you can put in any particular hand is the pot as it stands now. So for example, if a pot starts at $50, uh, the maximum bet that somebody can then make is uh, $50 because the pot is established to be $50. Um, once you make that $50 bet, which is the maximum bet, the, bet, the pot then raises to 100. The next player can either match your bet, put the $50 in, or they can raise your bet to 100 because the pot is now 100. And then now the pot is 200. Once you've added that 100, you can see how the pot gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. With pot limit, you always need to know what the pot is currently at because it limits the amount you can bet in any particular round. Uh, if you want to make bigger and bigger bets in a pot limit game, you're going to need to keep pushing more chips into the pot to get it bigger so that you can raise the limits on what you can actually bet. The final uh, variant is of course no limit, which as the name would imply, there is simply no limit to how much you can bet. Uh, as I've discussed in other videos, um, if you have a very large bankroll, 
you know, millions of dollars per se, you can actually bully a table by just making tons of big bets that are going to be uh, essentially putting any other player all in because you just have the bankroll to potentially lose. In fixed limit games, you're gonna find that there's typically two bet sizes. There's the small bet and the big bet. So for this example, I'll just say something like $5 and $10 respectively, okay? And in community card games, uh, the bet that you can make, either the small or the large bet, is gonna be contingent on what round of betting it is. So for pre-flop, Typically, uh, with games like Omaha or Texas Hold'em, pre-flop, you're only going to be allowed to make small bets. Uh, and in the subsequent rounds, so pre-flop, so you have three cards put out, okay, great. Uh, this means that we can only bet with the small bet amounts, all right? Then, in subsequent rounds, the turn and the river, for example, you will be able to make larger bets. So in the fourth card round or the fifth card round, you'll be able to make that big round bets uh, using the big bet option. In stud poker situations with fixed limit betting, uh, like I said, there's usually a small and a big bet option. And uh, you'll see that the small bet will be used on third or fourth street. So you'll be limited to making these small $5 bets as I used as my example. Uh, then subsequently in 5th, 6th, or 7th street, you'll have big bets being made. In games of draw poker that utilize fixed betting limits, you're going to still see these small and big bet options. And the big bet or small bet that you can make is going to be dependent on the number of draw rounds that you are utilizing in that particular variant of draw poker. Um, with draw poker, it's typically one or three draws. So in the most classic form of draw poker, you have five cards dealt to you beforehand. And in this round of fixed limit betting, you're going to typically only be allowed to make the small bets. So the example I've been using throughout this video, the $5 bet, all right? Uh, you won't be able to make $10 bets until uh, you have done your first round of drawing. So let's see here, I see that I have two sevens and an ace. I'm gonna go ahead and keep these three cards, um, drop the queen, and go ahead and draw two cards. Okay, we get two cards. Oh, look at that, I got another ace, so that's two pair. So based on that, I'll be able to comfortably make the big bet in the after the first round of draw. So that'll be the $10 bets that come after that first round draw. Inversely, you're going to have situations where you're playing draw poker and you can have three rounds of draw. So in those games, typically you use the small for the first two rounds, uh, meaning pre-draw and after the first draw, and then you use uh, the big bets in the second round of draw and, third, and after the third round of draw. So I'll show you what that would look like and how a hand would be built. So, all right, so essentially I draw five cards. Of course, these cards would be known only to me. Oh, wow, look at me. I already got a pair of queens. I'm gonna keep that ace. I'm gonna go ahead and bet uh, first the ante, and then uh, I like my pair of queens, so I'm gonna go ahead and make a, a raise of the small, all right? Then I'm going to ask to draw two more cards. Okay, oh wow, look at that. Now I got almost a straight draw. Um, since again, this is the first round of draw, I'm limited to only making these small bets. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and gamble I'm gonna drop my queen, and in the second round of draw, I got a five, not looking good. I'm gonna check, but somebody else happened to bet the big bet because they thought they had something good. Discard, oh wow, look at that, I got the 10. So now I'm gonna be limited, of course, to just making those uh, big bets. If you're playing no limit, obviously then you're gonna be pushing in really heavy because you just got a straight. And the only thing that beats a straight, of course, well, there's a couple of things. You have flush or full house possibilities, but in any game of draw poker, those kind of hands are extremely rare. Um, quite frankly, I'm amazed that I got a 10 on that last hand. Quite an amazing bit of luck. In pot limit or no limit situations, the re-raise always needs to be at least the size of the raise. So for example, if the initial bet is $10 and someone wants to raise, they typically have to bet at least that 
they need to raise at least that initial amount. So uh, if player one bets $10, then player two is going to raise it. He needs to raise it by at least $10, okay? So now the bet is $20. So then we go to player number three. Player number three uh, can has two choices. They can either play just for 20, uh, that would be a call, or they can raise, uh, or in this case, it would be a re-raise because the previous player had already raised. So they're gonna re-raise. They have to raise at least another $10 because that was the raise. So they're gonna raise 30, total bet. A common misconception is that you need to raise twice the previous uh, raise, and that's just simply not true. It certainly does create uh, a strong statement about the power of your hand to everyone at the table. So if you want to make an aggressive play with a re-raise, I would recommend that you make at least double the previous raise in order to show that level of aggression that you're trying to get. Anything less than twice the previous raise is simply not going to make a strong enough statement and ultimately, uh, the player that you're re-raising is likely just to limp in uh, to the hand and, and hopefully not uh, lose too much. So I went, I've gone ahead and I've set up an example where I have four players at a game of Texas Hold'em and we have a small blind and big blind. Each one, the small blind is in for $5 with the big blind in for 10 uh, and the blue chips are representing $20 in this particular situation. So uh, if player number three, who is not the dealer, they simply are the player sitting to the uh, left of the big blind, uh, they want to raise. And so the current bet is uh, $10. So they, if they want to raise, they're going to have to raise by the big blind. So we see they're gonna actually be betting $20 uh, or one of these blue chips, okay? Now this player right here, the dealer, has an option. They can either pay $20 into the, into the bet, or if they want to raise, they can raise the minimum amount uh, that the previous player raised, which was only actually $10, not 20, as you might misconceive here. So uh, if I want to bet, my minimum bet is going to be 30, not 40. I don't need to double the previous bet. I just simply need to bet uh, by the previous raise minimum. So here I'm gonna bet 30 in this particular case. So then it goes back to the small blind who only put in uh, $5 initially and now the bet is up to uh, 30, so they would have to put an additional 25 in to stay in this hand, or they can decide to fold, which depending on the strength of their hand, I, I uh, would say, just take a look at what they got. Ooh, <laughs> queen king. Uh, that would probably be a good bet to, to play that hand. So um, that's a pretty good hand. Let's go ahead and say that they do. And then finally, the big blind would have to make that final decision if they want to uh, look at their hand. They see they have queen, three on suit, uh, not a great hand per se, but maybe they feel lucky and they're already $10 committed. They could feel sure that's worth an extra $20. So then the last option would then go to this other player who of course could raise again, uh, which they would have to raise by at least $10 or they could raise more. So the way with raising uh, more and more, uh, you're going to find that you can actually fill the pot with chips by because if this player then raises by 20, they don't they simply don't want to raise by 10, they want to raise by 20, then the uh, pot, the raises just become out of control where players are not going to be encouraged to actually raise. They're going to want to control the pot size because their hands aren't that uh, that good. We've talked previously about when to raise and when not to raise pre-flop, so I'll refer that you watch those videos in order to get a good idea of when is a right time to raise pre-flop and when is not. So you gotta know when to hold them, know when to fold them. So in fixed limit or no limit, the size of a potential raise is rather straightforward. So with fixed limit, as I've stated previously, you have a fixed amount that you can actually raise by. Uh, that is the table stakes, as they sometimes refer to them. But the most common variant of uh, poker, or especially in games of Texas Hold'em, is a no limit variety. And with no limit, a player has absolutely no limits to how much they can raise a particular bet. The only thing that they're limited by is how many chips they have at the table. Um, 
it's pretty much one of those Hollywood fictitious scenarios where a player will throw the keys to their Lamborghini on the table and, you know, raise by some ridiculous, untraceable amount uh, that's arbitrary and open to interpretation. Uh, you just don't see these kinds of things. So I guess before you try it, understand that nobody does it. I throw my 2004 Honda Civic. <laughs> So I've explained fixed limit and no limit and how those have very straightforward and easy to understand limitations on raises. Uh, the interesting situation is when you're playing pot limits. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at a situation that I have uh, set up here. So again, we have four players, a dealer, small blind, big blind, and a fourth player who's uh, sitting right to the left of the big blind. So the small blind uh, is going to bet their minimum bet, which is $5, the big blind 10. Okay, so now that means that if player number four here, this player that is not the, neither the dealer, the small or the big, they wish to raise their maximum amount that they can bet is the total pot value. So that means essentially that in this particular situation, they're not entitled to bet uh, $20, they can only bet $15 total, so a raise of $5. So they're gonna go ahead and raise the pot as much as they can, which essentially would be the uh, 15. So here we have, again, we're gonna double the pot. So essentially you're doubling the pot each time, okay? So this player right here is gonna put a $15 bet, uh, a $5 raise over the big blind, okay? So now the dealer, for whatever reason, really loves their hand. Uh, they think that $15 is nothing. So now you see the pot has grown to $30. Uh, so they're, they're obligated to at least match the uh, previous bet of 15 if they wish to stay in the hand, but they're gonna call a raise, and the maximum raise that they can raise their bet to is the total pot size. So again, a total uh, bet of $30 total. So now we have 20, uh, 25, 30. So we now have a pot size of 40 plus 20. So a total pot size of 60. The pot has, has uh, let me just kind of arrange that so you can see a little bit better. Uh, so that's a pot size of 60. Now, a small blind had only gone in for that initial $5. And uh, now we see that the dealer had put a $30 bet in. So the minimum amount that they're gonna have to play, if they uh, pay rather, if they want to keep playing, is an additional $25, all right? And so they're gonna go ahead and just call. They don't wanna raise anymore, they just wanna call in this particular example that I'm providing. But now, because they've added 25, that raises the total pot to, uh, let's see here, 50, 60, 70, 85. 85 is the total bet here. So now the big blind uh, has, again, they've only put 10 in as their initial bet, and the total uh, bet now is at 30. So they would have to put 20 more in, but they actually want to bet the maximum amount, which as we've established, the total maximum amount right now is 85. So if this big blind is just crazy about their hand, uh, and they really want to fill this pot as much as they can pre-flop, the most they can possibly bet here, uh, in addition to, uh, sorry, rather, the most they can re-raise uh, the bet is an additional 50 something euro, 55 euro in this particular case. So a total of 85. So um, we'll go use these as 20, 40, 60, 80, take back the $10 chip that they put in previously. So here we have uh, 85, 90, 100, 150, 160 is the total bet now, or sorry, rather the total pot. Uh, going back to this previous player who had only, as we had said earlier, only uh, had bet 15 uh, in the previous round, bef uh, raising from the big blind, is now in a really awkward situation where they're gonna have to put in an additional 70 just to play, but if they wanna raise, of course, they could raise even more. It's all dependent on the total pot size at any particular time. So the real trick here with playing pot limit in any variation of poker is that you have to have a clear understanding of what the pot is sitting at because the last thing you wanna do is uh, try to make a pot bet um, that is exceeds the pot uh, as it currently sits or is simply a very small amount that's not really gonna intimidate anybody. So in summary, 
with no limit, you have absolutely no limit to the size of the bet you can make. It's only limited by the number of chips you have at the table at that particular moment. If somebody makes a large bet and you simply don't have the chips to cover that particular bet, your option in no limit is to go in for less, uh, but that is called an all-in bet at that point, and you are entitled to see the showdown, even if you have dramatically less chips than the bet is currently at. You're just entitled to uh, potentially win less of the pot now because you weren't able to cover the full bet. In uh, fixed limit, of course, as, as I've said, you are limited by the predetermined standards of small and big bets. And then in pot limit, of course, your raises are limited to the total current size of the pot. And that number obviously increases as the pot continues getting bigger and bigger and bigger. The last thing, and a very important thing to remember, is that in pot limit and no limit games, the minimum re-raise is always the amount of the previous raise. So for example, as I said, if a player raises by 10, then when you re-raise, your re-raise has to be at least a 10 more than their raise. So that concludes our brief introduction to raises and re-raises, and more importantly, why they're so important to our understanding of how to build the pot. I hope you found this particular video informative. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please feel free to click that like button and leave a comment down below. My name is Dominic. This is the All America Casino Guide reminding you, play responsibly. Hey guys, make sure to check out our other video on terminology of re-raising. It's really super important that you have all the terms down because otherwise you're going to look like a real noob at the table and then people are going to pick on you. That's not what you want. You want to be a, you want to play a pro. You want to be a pro. You want to act like a pro. And the way to be a pro, know the words. Know the terms. Know the terms. The pros. The pros know the terms. And you're going to be a pro just like us because you know the terms.